In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we journey with our Lord and Savior during this Lenten season, come with me this evening to the Word of God, recorded in the book of St. John, the second chapter, beginning with verse 13. And it reads, now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers doing business. When he had made a whip of cord, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the change, the change money and poured out the change money and overthrew the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Then the disciples remembered that it was with written, zeal for your house have eaten me up. So the Jews answered and said to him, What sign do you show to us, since you do these things? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then the Jews said, It has taken forty-six years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said these things, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus has said. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> I want to talk with you today on the subject, a little while, God don't want no mess in his house. As we look at our text in John, he tells us that the Passover was at hand. The Passover was one of the greatest celebrations of the Jews. Jews from all over the known world came to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. We know that the Passover was that great event where God in terms delivered them out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand. Yes. And they remembered how God had delivered them and how God had saved them. And every year they would gather to thank God for his great deliverance. Yes. This was a great event for the Jews. They gathered all over to celebrate the Passover. As they gathered, we note in the temple. In the temple there, there were full coats in the temple. You had the coat of the priest. This is where the priests only would go once a year to offer sacrifice for the people. Then you had the court, an area where the Jews would come. This was only the natural born Jews. If you were not born a Jew, you would not be able to enter the second court of the temple. And the third court of the temple was for the women. There the women could come and worship. And the fourth court was for the Gentiles, those who had converted over to Judaism or believed Jesus, those who had denied the, those gods, false gods, to come to believe in the triune God. There, they were called proselytes. Here again, they were able to be in the fourth court, the outer court of the temple. Now, this is the portion where the Jews chief priests, and all those who had taken up to sell their goods. They made it a marketplace, a Walmart, so to speak, that all that you need, you could get there. The people who came from all over the known world would come and be able to buy a sheep or a goat, or blessed sheep or a goat, even if they brought their own. The priests would say, well, this sheep is not clean. 
you have to buy one of ours. And you can think of all that was going on and the set up for the doors and the, and the cows and all. Just think of it now. The article was now for the Gentiles were all taken up with them selling sheep, goats, and, and all their wares there. As Jesus came to the temple, no doubt walking around. You can imagine him walking around looking at things going on. Looking how the system is set up. Because it was indeed a system that they set up from the chief priest Anna all the way down to the other priest. Everybody was getting that cut. Getting a cut on the deal. And here Jesus walked around and looked. And no doubt some think that we often have a picture of Jesus being meek and mild. We see and think of him being the cow in Jesus the one with the shepherd leading the shepherds or carrying the shepherds. These are pictures that we normally have in our mind of Jesus, the kind Jesus. But here we see another side of Jesus. We see an angry Jesus. And for us, we note that some say, well, we sin when we get anger. The Bible said that you can be angry. There is a righteous anger. And this is the righteous anger that Jesus had and the righteous anger that we as God's people should have. Every person, every child of God should be upset with the evil that is going on in the world today. Every person should be upset with things and not permit things that you know that are wrong to go on and say nothing. But we have gotten to the place today that we want, don't want to be involved. So we say nothing. We see and know things that are going on that are wrong, even in our own home, and we say nothing. There ought to be a righteous anger for every child of God, Amen. for things that are going on that are evil, and we ought to speak against it. God has given us the authority, the power to speak against those things that are wrong. And we as children of God ought to take our stand and be angered about that. We see things happening and we say nothing. Here, people at the temple was agreeing with all that was going on. And it's so easy today for us that we can slip into each sin that ease into our lives. And because the world says, okay, and because everybody is doing it, we say it's all right. Note, in our text today, in our reading, God brought before us the commandments, a standard for us to uh, live by, these commandments for us to strive daily to obey. We know that we may break them, but we know that we have Jesus who have kept them perfectly for us, that we can flee to the cross and ask for that forgiveness and seek that forgiveness. But these commandments stand. God have not lessened his justice on these commandments just because the world say, well, this is wrong or we shouldn't be doing this. God, where it still stands today. Amen. Jesus, no doubt, walk about. And some may think that Jesus all at a certain just went ballistic there, got crazy. But I can picture in my mind Jesus, no doubt, walking about, looking at all other things, looking at the arguments going as the money changers were cheating those out of their money. As they were refusing to give them or, or say that their animal was blessed and, and the argument going on and, and the cows lowing and, and the sheep bleating and all of that. Jesus here walked about, and I can imagine as he walked about, he picked up a cord, perhaps some that they had with cows tied to or what have you, and as he walked about, maybe he was twisting them together, looking at what was going on. Then the anger came as he drove them out, began to whip the animals out. Now, some said that he whipped the people out, but if you note there, he never said there that Jesus hit any other people. It says he drove the animals out and also turned over the, the tables of the money changers, 
turn them over. Can you imagine seeing these money changers there running, trying to get their money, keeping their money from running together with somebody else as Jesus turned over these tables and no one said a word to him. Notice he was acting in the power of God. No one did a thing to him. No police come in. No temple guards came in to arrest him. And we must know that the temple guards was there. No temple guards came rushing in to haul him out. No one said a thing to him. And to we, when we speak in the power of God, the anger over the things that are going on, God had promised to be with us there. No, as he turned over the tables and Dry them out. He speaks, says, you have made my house the place of worship. You have blocked worship now. You have blocked them from coming to worship. And you have made it a thin, a den of thieves, a, a den of, of merchandise here. You have made my father's house. And he was angered at his father's house. We too should have that love and passion for our father's house, for God's house. We should love like David says, oh how I love when I'm able to go to the house of God. Wouldn't it be great today if there those just couldn't wait for the weekend. I just can't wait to Sunday to go to the house of God, Amen. to hear God's word. That's the desire and the passion that we should have for God's house and for his word. As Jesus turned over the tables and he says now again, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up again. Note here that Jesus was speaking of his body, not that physical temple that it built that took 46 years, but he was speaking of his body, speaking of his death and resurrection. And the people missed it. Destroy this temple, my body. And in three days, I'll raise it up again because he had the power. Amen. Yes. Let us take a look today. What would happen if Jesus would come to visit today? <clears throat> what would happen if he would come to visit our temple today? Would he find things that need to be cleansed? Would he find money changers? And just think of it today, what it would be like if people would come in the church in the house of God, bring their cell phone and talk on their cell phone while the word of God is being preached, or watch videos on their cell, on their computers, or bring their computers in. Think of what it would be like and talking and going on, carrying on a conversation, disrupting the worship. Here, Jesus was upset because of this disruption of the worship. That people were not able to worship God. People were being robbed and disturbed from hearing the word of God. And so it is in our place today that there are those who come and they're not able perhaps to hear and to worship God. Many of the people at that time, no doubt, was not able to offer their sacrifice because of the argument going on, because of the cheating. Maybe they told them, you don't have enough money to buy my lamb, or you can't buy this dove, or what have you. People went back home not having offered their sacrifice to God. Is it true today that there are those who come to worship and leave and really have not worshipped God? Because of the distraction? Because of the distraction, perhaps, in the church, or even in the temple. Note here as we talk about the temple, it's talking about Jesus cleansing the temple in Jerusalem. But let's move a little farther here today to know that God says that our body is the temple of God. And what is it in our bodies that need to be cleansed? Jesus is walking around today looking to see what is going on. What is going on in our bodies that need to be cleansed, that have taken hold of us, that disrupt us from truly worshiping God? Not only just here in the house of God, 
but wherever we may be, what is it that need taken out? Oh, the old folks used to sing a song. Lord, search me, search me through and through. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and cleanse me. Yes, maybe we need to pray that prayer also today. We need to ask God to come and search our heart, search our temple. What is it, Lord, that have eased in? What tables have set up in our temple? What money changes are there? What things are there that need to be taken out? Lord, is there hatred, jealousy, envy, malice that are set up in our temple? Lord, cleanse us. That should be our prayer today. And not only today, but always. And we should set our heart daily because it's so easy for things to set up to distract us from worshiping God, to distract us from placing God first. The, this old body of ours, this temple that we have, that God is supposed to dwell in. So often we sometimes let this body push God out and we come first. Oh Lord, I'm, I'm tired today. And all kinds of excuses from doing the work that God has called us to do. Yes, what is it that God need to cleanse, cleanse out of your temple? He is walking about and he is looking today. And note that God can't use no dirty temple. God can't use no filthy hands. We said that these hands to serve God, these lips, this mouth, this body, this temple, God can't use us when we are filthy. So only God can cleanse us. Only God. And you know the sins that linger therein. And only God is able to cleanse us. Oh, he is walking about today. He is looking. Oh, we can call him, come, Lord Jesus, and cleanse my heart. Or we can pray the prayer like David. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cleanse me, Lord, so that I can serve you. Cleanse my mouth, O gracious Father, my tongue, so that I can speak for you. Take the filth that comes from it and cleanse it so I can speak for you. Lord, cleanse my eyes so that I can see the things that need to be done. See the hurt of my neighbors. Lord, cleanse me. Oh, this should be our prayer today. God is still cleansing the temple and he is willing to clean ours only if we would call him. Come, Lord Jesus, cleanse my temple. Make me whole, Lord, so that I will be able to serve you. Make me whole so that I will be able to sing for you and speak for you. Lord, make me whole should be our prayer. Jesus came in the temple, cleansing the temple. Note that Jesus gives a sign. He gives the sign three days and I will rise again. He predicts his resurrection, that we too will have the power as we walk with him, as we serve him, that we too will rise and live with him forever and ever. May the Lord bless you today as he daily cleanse your temple as we come today to partake of the Lord's body and blood especially we ask O oh Lord created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me amen and amen, amen. amen. now I have a selection by Minister Dale 